Thank you for doing this. I'm so happy to see you again. It's been a long time. Well, let's talk about optimism. Let's talk about an incredible accomplishment. Gabby, it's been 10 years since the shooting in Tucson. When I think about you on that day, and I look at you now, it is thrilling to see how far you've come. What does it mean to you to be here 10 years later? I'm getting better. Slowly, I'm getting stronger. And Gabby works really hard. I mean, every week. Um, and I think it's a testament to somebody who is just not going to ever give up. Yes. Yes. Boom. <laughs> what's in it? What's inside you that gives you the will to keep fighting? Move ahead. Move ahead. Yeah, that's something I always, uh, you know, recognized about Gabby from, you know, when we first were uh, started dating and then when we were engaged was it was uh, it was always about the future. Yes. And you're not going to change the past. And this is now 10 years in the past. Uh, but we've got to all, you know, focus on, um, you know, today and yeah. the next day yeah. and the next month. And how do we make our country a better place? Yeah. We don't want to dwell on the past, but to recognize how far and how much you've accomplished. I do think about that day. Mark, there was a moment, several moments, agonizing moments when you thought she may have been killed. Yes. Yeah. Well, how does this anniversary strike you? How do you deal with what comes up on this day? Uh, as we approach the 10 years, I, I do think back to that day often. Uh, there was a moment that um, where it was reported that Gabby had, had died. It was about 30 minutes. Um, but Gabby's pretty tough. Gabby's pretty tough. Really tough. Uh, she's, you know, I, I, I knew there was a chance that uh, that, that might not be true. <laughs> and it uh, turned out that was the case. <laughs> and, you know, I landed in Tucson and, you know, spent... Uh, weeks in the hospital there and then six months gabby was in the hospital in in houston yeah. for six months yeah. going through extensive rehab yeah. it was a, it was a challenging time you know i think we often i think this is true for most folks and we're going through a tough time now as a country yeah. Yeah. you know awful things happen and they are often difficult to overcome it's important and this is what happened with with us and that we had the support in Tucson from a community that, you know, was able to rally around uh, Gabby and all the folks affected by this in, in a way that um, I think um, highlights, uh, you know, what our country is really yeah, about. Yes. And when we think back, we often remember the good parts yes. and not so much the, you know, the, you know, the, the, other, the other side of this. I read that when she would hold your hand in the hospital bed, she would turn your wedding ring she would spin it around like that, even when she was still kind of unconscious. So it was just a reaction, because yeah. that's what she used to do when we would go out to dinner, yeah. like at, sitting at the, at the, at the yeah. table. So. But what did that mean to you? Well, it meant that she was, that you were... Uh, Alive. You, well, that. <laughs> you were, and you were still there. Yes. Like, that was still Gabby, even though she was in a coma yeah. and she had tubes... She was intubated at the time. Barack Obama. Yeah, well, then, yeah and then uh, the President Obama came in at one point. And that was actually the time when, uh, when she regained consciousness, shortly after he left the room. Well, I remember that speech when he said to the McHale Center and the crowds that Gabby opened her eyes. Did you ever go back and look at that? Did you ever see that? Move ahead. Move <laughs> ahead. We've talked about that, right? You know, we've talked about it a number of times, like, would, would, would Gabby want to go and watch all the coverage from that day and... Move ahead. Not, not really, no. It makes sense. I, I knew you a little bit before the shooting, and it always struck me that you had the gift of gab. You were so eloquent, and speech came so easily to you. And now I see that you fight for every word. You fight for it. What is that like? What is your rehabilitation like? Really, really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you still have a way with words. <laughs> yeah. Tip of the tongue, Gabby Gifford, 
Speak, speak, speak so quiet now. Hard. The words are right there. Yes. Tip of the tongue. Frustrating. Yes. And I think we all experience that to, to some extent, right? At some point, you're, you're trying to remember the person's name or you're trying to remember the right word. But be, with Gabby's traumatic brain injury, it's something that she deals with, like, all the time. Yes. But Gabby, you know everything that's going on. I can see it in your eyes. She's not missing anything. And then when your name is Gabby, <laughs> it's quite ironic that you find yourself in this situation, right? What do you enjoy doing these days? What's fun? Oh, I'm so busy. A lot of Zoom calls. Work, work, work. Speech therapy, a lot of homework. Yoga twice a week. French horn, Spanish lessons, riding your bike, walking on my treadmill, watching movies. It's Groundhog Day. All over again. <laughs> All over again. You know, the Zoom calls has been kind of brutal. Yes. Like Gabby's on Zoom a lot. Yeah. For a number of reasons, and myself as well, and I, uh, it's been... It's been tough. We kind miss of, people. Kind of over Zoom. Yeah. I think the whole country is over Zoom. We miss each other. You know, we miss people. It's a great tool, but it'll be nice to move back to something that feels more normal. You are working hard. You're working on gun safety reforms. You've been tireless, both of you, on that. I thought about this last 10 years, the progress that has been made. I also have to remember six of the worst mass shootings in our country have been in the last 10 years. Do you ever feel hopeless or get frustrated? Yeah, I mean, hope is... Uh... Hope. I've known the darkest of days, days of pain and uncertain recovery, but confronted by despair, I have summons hope. Hope, hope, hope. Yeah, we, I mean, we also have to be, you know, hopeful about the, about the future and that we can, we can do better. I mean, and we know what works. Uh, this, like a lot of other issues, you know, requires um, a lot of hard work by, you know, thousands of folks across the country uh, to deal with it. You know, and, and, I, and I, I, I am hopeful, as Gabby is, that, uh, that we're going to do better as a country. Well, you were elected senator, and Arizona hasn't had two Democratic senators, I think, since 1953. Right. You're a gun safety activist, and you were elected in the state of Arizona. That says something. Yeah. Well, I think what it says is that uh, Arizonans, like most Americans, realize we've got an issue. There are common sense things we can do about this, you know, background checks for, for gun sales and other things. Uh, for problems, there are solutions, and uh, it's, it's pretty clear what these, these are, and Arizonans get that. I traveled across the state for 21 months. I mean, the last part of it was rather virtually. Virtually. <laughs> and just listening to folks about the issues that they're dealing with. It's often things about... Oh, Parker. When I was in Parker, yeah. Arizona, met this uh, elderly gentleman, I'll never you know, forget this, he uh, came up to me at a senior center and uh, I was standing there and there was some folks eating lunch and he stood up from his lunch and he says that uh, after his wife died, they'd, he'd lost her pension and now he was trying to get by on $700 of social security income a month. And he said to me, he said, uh, please tell me that this is not going to go away. Like, I don't know what I'll do. He even, he even said he'd probably be homeless. You know, so he's worried about, you know, his, his situation, about, you know, issues like Social Security. Right now we have 400,000 Arizonans that are trying to get by on unemployment benefits. Now we extended those. But folks are, you know, really struggling, often economic issues and health care. So yeah, it's my job to figure out, you know, how are we going to uh, work in a bipartisan way? Something that Gabby was really good at when she was in the House. I mean, she had, uh, you know, friends on the other side of the aisle. Ted Poe. Who? Ted Poe. Oh, Ted Poe. Yeah, yeah. Ted Poe was a very conservative Republican from Texas. You know, there wasn't a lot of stuff that, well, they didn't agree on everything, but they did find things. The border. That, yeah, that they could, they could work on together. Border issues. He was from Texas. Gabby being from Arizona. I think you would, um, didn't he come to Arizona? And you went to Texas. And they worked on border issues together. So it's, it's about finding this common ground um, to 
improve people's lives. Well, it's interesting because if I had told you 10 years ago, you're going to be a senator, would you have believed that? No. Would you have believed that? <laughs> no. no. It was no. not in my plan. And in it your heart not. of hearts. No. I had no, no. Is there any part of you that thinks it should be her? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Gabby was the member of Congress. I often think to myself, I mean, if something would have happened to me, would Gabby have become an astronaut? Knowing yes. Gabby, probably. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I had a plan when I was a little kid to be the first person to walk on the planet Mars. Well, that didn't happen. But I, you know, I got into, I went into space four times. Being a U.S. Senator was not part of the plan. And I'm pretty sure that if what happened 10 years ago did not happen, that day turned out differently, Gabby would be a U.S. Senator. I mean, it is really critical that we elect folks like Gabby folks that are willing to compromise on issues to solve hard problems. I hear you say that, and it sounds so good. I think people want to see that bipartisanship, but how do you make it happen when our politics seems so broken? There seems to be no incentive to get along. It's not broken on everything. I was sitting in the chamber just last week with Mitt Romney and Dan Sullivan, and uh, Dan Sullivan brought up the, the point that there's so much that is done uh, on so many issues. He was, he was specifically talking about an issue that had to do with the, with the oceans and plastic in the oceans that he worked on with Sheldon Whitehouse. Both have coastal states, Alaska, Rhode Island, and I mean, successfully got this passed. And, and so folks do work together there. But it's often um, the impression is that on like the, the bigger issues that it, it is difficult to come together. And that's why there's just got to be a commitment by folks to just compromise and continue to have these conversations and, 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 and work. Because we all, at the end of the day, right, we all want the same thing, right? We want, you know, affordable health care. And we want our kids to get a good education. And we want an economy that works for everybody. I think we can all agree on that. It's just how do you get there? Gabby, do you like being back in Washington? Awesome. <laughs> yes. Really cold. <laughs> you miss that Tucson yes, sunshine. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's a little. It's been a little, little chilly. chilly here. Rain, tiny rain. Yeah, it was snowing uh, a couple of weeks ago, but Gabby was in Tucson. Yes. Yeah. You know, we'll we'll spend most of our time in in Tucson. Are you hopeful that gun reform and gun safety will be one of the things you can somehow break through on when you're here in Washington? Yeah, I think there's there's bipartisan support you know, for, you know, some of these, some of these issues and, and, and Gabby and the work she's done um, leading, you know, her organization has had a lot of success in the States. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hopeful. You have such an amazing spirit. I love being in your company. Where does it come from? Where does your hope come from? I want to make the world a better place. And you are. Yes. Boom. Boom. What have you learned about Gabby in this last 10 years? And what have you learned from her? A lot, right? I, I, I always knew she was tough. I just didn't get the level. And to be just so positive when something really awful happens and to be able to look ahead and not contemplate so much about what happened, but also how much of an inspiration she is to other people. I mean, as we travel across the state and the country and you know, we meet folks that from all different backgrounds, but often who have something horrible happen to yes. them. Could be a car accident or stroke or some other illness. That Gabby is, a, is an inspiration to, I would say, probably millions of people across the country and across the planet. When we were in Israel, we were up at the oh, Sea of Drake. Galilee. Yeah, that, that guy. <laughs> who was that guy? I don't know. One of her doctors, who she only, who she only saw briefly. Yeah in the hospital, but we were at the Sea of Galilee in a restaurant and he comes up to Gabby, he was so excited to see her because he was like a gastroenterologist that dealt with her when she was in the hospital. And oh, trach. No, he, he did, he was the, the feeding tube guy. Oh, trach, 
Uh, no, and then he pulled it out. Oh, oh the worst. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's bad uh, memories. Uh, yes. That was <laughs> the Gab worst. Gabby generally doesn't complain about like situations like this. That day she complained, and rightfully so. Well, then you knew it was bad. It yeah. Was, yeah, it, it had was, to be bad was, if she said so. Yeah. It does strike me, you know, this is a year where a lot of people are struggling and for different reasons. And no, they didn't go through what you've had to go through, but what is your message to people who might be struggling and having a hard time? Be a leader, set an example, be passionate, be courageous, be your best. We, were, we spent some time, you know, at the food bank in Tucson recently, and they're, they're handling thousands. three, yeah, thousands of people, thousands of cars a day. They're handling in three hours what they used to do in three days. And folks are really struggling. And I think it's important for, for folks to realize that we're gonna get through this. Um, there are better days ahead of us. We're gonna get through this as a country. Uh, we're gonna come out the other end stronger. We've gotta get folks to do a better job. We're in masks, socially distancing. Hospitals are being overwhelmed right now. But we have vaccine you know, on the horizon and that's, so there is light at the end of the tunnel. So there are better days ahead of us and our economy is gonna improve. Folks are gonna get back to work. Small businesses are going to come back. We just got to kind of buckle down here um, and understand that we really need to come together as a team. And we're going to have some new leadership in the White House, which yeah. is a positive thing. <laughs> well, we know where Gabby stands. We saw your speech at the DNC. Was that, what did that moment mean to you? Awesome. A lot of homework. French horn. Um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of time. A lot of time. America needs all of us to speak out, even when you have to fight to find the words. You worked hard for it. Yeah, yeah. I did want to ask you about the vaccine rollout. Now we're back to your senator self. Yeah. <laughs> but Arizona has the highest rate of transmission right now. Of and COVID. one of the lowest rates of vaccination, too. Are you disappointed with this vaccine rollout? And, and where do you place the blame? Yeah. yeah. I'm disappointed. It's similar to when we were, you know, a plan for testing and contact tracing. We didn't have a national plan. We still don't. Uh, we had a good plan in creating vaccines that clearly work. Um, but there was no plan for distribution. You just can't throw it over the fence to the states. Uh, we needed a national plan. We didn't have that. Some states don't have a very good plan. Arizona, I think, is one of them. Uh, we have to do better. We've got to get these vaccines in people's arms. They don't do good, any good sitting in a refrigerator. And then we've got to convince folks to be vaccinated. You know, we all look at, you know, Facebook and you smart people in your past who you thought were smart who don't think it's a good idea to be vaccinated. That's not a good message. We know this vaccine is safe and it works. It's the thing that's going to get us to um, the herd immunity we need, about 75% or, or, or so vaccinated. People need to be, be vaccinated when it's available. Is there anything you want to say or let people know about how you're doing? I'm optimistic. It will be a long, hard haul, but I'm optimistic. Gabby's like the most optimistic. Person. She really is. It's very <laughs> contagious. I caught it. That's a good thing to catch. Right. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. so nice to see Thank you both. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.